What's up everyone? I'm Tim and this is my channel 40 Times Around where we talk about everything related to motorcycles, camping, travel and adventure. And today we're doing the second installment of a three-part series about riding at night. And in this video we'll talk about obstacle avoidance and in particular dealing with animal encounters on a motorcycle. Stick around. Have you ever had to ride at night for some reason and maybe you felt a little unsafe about it? My hope with these three videos is that they will help set your mind at ease about the whole idea of riding a motorcycle at night and maybe they'll help you ride a little better and safer in the dark. There are lots of risks when riding a motorcycle but they become much worse at night when visibility is limited, which we talked about in the previous video in this series linked here. There are lots of other hazards to watch out for and animals are another major issue to deal with when riding at night. In this video, we'll focus on animals specifically on backcountry roads outside of cities and towns. When riding at night in towns and cities, there are some other obstacles you might want to watch out for, and we'll cover that at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around for that. In terms of animals, I'll break this down into 10 tips for dealing with animals and avoiding animals in the roadway. Before that, I just want to go over a few animal facts that you might want to keep in mind when you ride at night. This is mainly about nocturnal animals in general, but some of it applies to animals during the day as well. Some things differ depending on where you're riding and what animals you're likely to encounter. For example, deer breeding season is from October to early January, and deer will be more active during this time. Hunting season can also affect animal behavior. Moose can be particularly dangerous and not just because of their size, and honestly, hitting one on a motorcycle would be pretty devastating. But moose have an odd behavior when they panic. The moose will actually head towards you down the road in a game of chicken before turning off the road and darting into the woods. If you see one, slow down immediately and expect them to do this weird thing they do. Now deer, they tend to freeze in headlights, hence the term, like a deer in headlights, meaning someone is paralyzed with fear or shock. They'll also tend to follow headlights, so swerving is a bad idea. There are smaller animals to watch out for too. In a car, hitting a rabbit or squirrel would be maybe sad but in terms of safety would be almost unnoticed as long as you didn't swerve. It could be a little more dangerous on a bike if you don't react correctly. Rabbits, chipmunks, and squirrels will evade danger by changing directions quickly. This is why it's best to maintain your course in a straight line and avoid swerving. Raccoons are smart and they also travel in groups. Opossums will freeze and smile at you or rather glare their teeth at you. Slowing down and honking your horn will give them a good hint that they should take off. There are some birds, and this is more of a daytime thing, but let's just throw it in here for the sake of being thorough. But there are some birds of prey that may be attracted to roadkill or possibly living critters near the roadway. If you encounter one, head in the direction they're coming from. They most likely will not change their course. And those are some general guidelines specific to a few animals you might encounter. Let's jump into the tips with tip number one. When you see an animal, slow down. As you probably gathered from what I just said about all the different animals you can encounter, the common denominator is that swerving is typically a bad idea. It is almost always a better option to slow down. If you're on an empty road and you are traveling slow enough, it might be smarter to swerve, but use your best judgment on this. If impact is imminent, it's better to hit an animal head on and try to maintain control. If you're in mid swerve and hit an animal, you're almost guaranteed to go down. A very important factor when slowing down for an animal is to take a quick glance in your rear view. Or better yet, maintain that 360 degree vision and always try to know who's behind you and how close they're following. Another aspect to slowing down is try to avoid locking up your brakes if you don't have ABS. Smooth and firm braking is best and don't brake traction if you can. Also, if possible, honk your horn as you slow down. It may send the animal running as the sound of traffic can actually become normal to animals but the horn might startle them enough to get them off the road. Tip two is look for the eyes. When riding at night, you can usually spot the reflection of your light in an animal's eyes. Look for two small glowing dots on the side of the road. This is a clue that there's an animal to watch out for. And it can even give you a clue as to how large the animal is and maybe what type of animal. Definitely be on the lookout for eyes as this is a great first clue to danger. Tip three is to stay in the middle. In other words, avoid the edge of the road as that is where animals are most likely to be. Try to ride the center line if you can, as long as there's no traffic coming the other way. Some two laners will have appearing and disappearing passing lanes. I always use these when I can because 
It creates the most amount of space between me and the edge of the road. This will give me the most amount of time to react accordingly. Keep scanning the sides of the road and stay as far as you can from where an animal is most likely to be or be coming from. Tip four is to expect a herd. Not necessarily a herd, but most animals you wanna be looking out for will travel in packs. Deer, elk, and antelope are all herd animals. And where there is one, there is likely to be more. If you see one dart out in front of you, don't assume you're in the clear. Quite the opposite, actually. Be looking for the next one. To further that point, if there's a deer in the area, that means you're in an area where deer live. Meaning if the next deer isn't related to the one you just saw, they might still be neighbors. Roadkill is another clue to look for. If you see a dead deer on the side of the road, you're in deer country and you should be aware of that. Tip five is watch the shoulders. Like I said earlier, animals will likely come from the shoulder of the road. This is where you should be most alert. You should be scanning everywhere, but pay attention to the shoulder. Just because an animal looks content to stay on the side of the road, doesn't mean it won't jump out in front of you. I try to think of it as if any animal I see is in front of me. What I mean is if you see an animal off to the side, react as if it's in front of you, because in a few seconds it might be. Again, your horn is your friend. As you slow down during an approach, just give it a few honks. Tip six is use your high beams when you can. This increases sight distance, but also helps make animal eyes more visible. On my old bike, I had auxiliary lights that had 180 degree field of sight, which meant that when I had them on, I could see as much off to the sides as I could in front of me. They were incredibly helpful when driving through deer country. Tip seven is heed the warning signs. When you see a bright yellow sign with a picture of a deer or a moose or any other animal, trust that sign, especially in the evening and early in the morning when animals are most active. These signs are very purposely placed in areas where crossings are common. Side note, this video is hilarious and you should check it out. This is uh, the phone call from a woman complaining about the town putting up deer crossing signs in inconvenient places. And she was requesting that they move the signs so the animals would cross somewhere else. It's pretty great. You should check it out when you're done watching this video. Tip number eight is learn the common spots for animals. Water sources, for example, are common hangouts for animals as they'll be drinking and feeding there. Meadows are a spot I have found deer love to hang out. Learn to recognize the potential areas for wildlife and assume there's an animal there. This will vary depending on the animal you're trying to avoid, but just get familiar with the area you're riding in and a little research can really go a long way here. Tip number nine is skip the whistle. Deer whistles create a false sense of security. Whether they work or not, I'm not sure. There is some debate on the effectiveness and research at this point has been inconclusive. I can't say if they work or not, but they do create a sense of security that may not be warranted. You would be better off using your horn, like I said earlier. Animals will be more likely to react to that. The point is, even if you are using a deer whistle, don't let your guard down. And the tenth and final tip is to use more than your eyes to see animals. A lot of this is going to come down to what you can't see. As it is, visibility is going to be low at night, in the dark. If you rely on only what you can see, this might not be enough. You need to see with your mind's eye all potential hazards, analyze everything and make predictions, and react safely and accordingly to what is likely to happen. Motorcycling is always demanding multiple senses to accomplish a safe and enjoyable ride. It's actually one of the great gifts of riding. It's one of those things that if you don't ride, you wouldn't get it. There is a lot that can be seen in the dark if you think about it. Movement in the trees and grass, bushes that might have berries could be hiding a feeding animal. Water sources, like I said, roads that intersect the bottoms of hills, and so many other things you can do to better predict animal encounters. So those are the 10 tips. And like I said at the beginning of this video, there are some obstacles other than animals that you may want to watch out for, in particular if you're in a small town or city at night. For example, watch out for pedestrians in general, but especially near bars, pubs, and clubs as they may be likely to do something unpredictable. I'm gonna get into more of that stuff in the next video in this series about riding at night where we'll talk about general tips and safety concerns with riding at night. I think the key thing to remember is that you have to be extra vigilant at night when riding a motorcycle. Even cars pulled over on the side of the road can be hazards. Strange things happen at night on empty roads. Someone could be sleeping in their car and wake up to swing their door open without thinking to check first if anyone was coming. You have to always expect the unexpected. Anyways, that wraps it up. 
I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos about motorcycles, camping, travel, and adventure. Also, let us know in the comments below if I missed any tips or anything that applies to riding locally in your area in regards to animals. I'm sure we would all find it helpful. You guys always leave great comments, so anyone watching this, make sure to check down below for the comments, and I'm sure there will be even more great info on this topic down there. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.